Hey guys, so I want to talk a bit about documentaries because documentaries are kind of a genre that kind of get overlooked in my opinion. I'm gonna just recommend some random documentaries that I think you should all watch. They're very eye-opening, very interesting, very funny at times. So let's go through some documentaries that I like. The first documentary I'm gonna talk about is Wiener. Wiener was a big documentary when it came out. It's about a New York congressman that got caught in some scandal. He was sexting underage girls and he was filming this documentary in the hopes of documenting his comeback. And unfortunately, it didn't really turn out to go that way. This follows the politician Anthony Weiner, who has been making headlines, especially when Trump was running for his election the first time. This isn't a very partisan documentary. I think people of all political beliefs can enjoy this documentary. There is something charming about Anthony Weiner in this documentary, but he's a politician. It's his job to be charming. But he's a very more grassroots kind of politician. He's the kind of person who will yell and scream and just go in the streets and blurt out his opinions, and people really liked him for that. He's able to put on a good show. In this documentary, you can really see the divide between Anthony Weiner, the politician, and Anthony Weiner in his personal life. He's very transparent in this documentary, which kind of makes you admire the guy in a certain weird way, despite him being a fucking creep. This is just an overall very interesting character study. The fact that he's so transparent is admirable, but the fact that he's so transparent also just shows that he's a complete asshole. He's a pathetic, but dedicated, narcissistic, yet charismatic politician. It's really about a guy who never learns his lesson. Even when they take everything away from this man, it feels like he's changing his behavior just because of his personal loss and not because of the fact that he was doing something that's completely unspeakable and disgusting. What really steals the show in this documentary is his wife. His wife is Huma Abedin, who's a close associate with Hillary Clinton. And so she's just this big politician. Meanwhile, he's more on the small scale. He's more of a mayoral candidate. And she wants to kind of stay with this guy. But you can really tell that this guy is preventing the progression of her career. And while Anthony Weiner is unapologetically transparent, Huma Abedin knows how to behave in front of a camera a bit more, and she is truly repulsed at the way her husband is behaving in this situation. But she tries to hide it, and all she does is give Anthony Weiner these death glares, these fucking death stares that make you say, oh fuck, she's not happy. Their relationship kind of reminded me of Kim Kardashian and Kanye West, where you have Kanye West that's out here in public making an ass out of himself, and then you have Kim Kardashian, who's a bit more concerned about the way the public perceives her. And it kind of has that dynamic in this documentary. I think Huma Abedin actually made this documentary really interesting, but overall I just think that the documentary Wiener is a really interesting character study on a politician. How they behave in the light of the public versus how they are in their personal life. And despite him being a disgusting figure, I think Anthony Weiner is charismatic enough to make an interesting film. I love the documentary Weiner. You guys should check it out. This is the worst. Doing a documentary on my scandal. Hi! Second documentary I'm gonna talk about is The Last Gladiators. This is a hockey documentary and it's actually my brother that recommended me this documentary. And I was a little skeptical because my brother is a big hockey fan and I couldn't really tell if he was just being biased. But no, he wasn't being biased. This is truly a very good documentary. This documentary kind of shows how the hockey game changed throughout the years. We look at clips from the 70s or we look at movies like Slapshot, and it's a very violent sport, and it was heavily reliant on goons. And then as the sport progressed, it kind of changed, it became more of a game of speed. And caught in the middle of this transition is a hockey player by the name of Chris Nylon, 
who is a goon and talks about all of the fights he gets into. He's a brawler type, but all of a sudden the game kind of changed and he wasn't able to change with the game. It's really revealing of what hockey culture is like. We learn the importance of goons. A lot of people who aren't really familiar with hockey don't really understand why there's fighting and why it's such a violent sport. And this documentary kind of explains it perfectly. Why is hockey so violent? Why is fighting acceptable in hockey and not acceptable in sports like basketball or football or soccer? And you get to see great hockey players talk about their era of hockey. For instance, Guy Carboneau shows up in this documentary and they talk about their decade and how hockey changed throughout the years. It also talks about the repercussions that came with being a goon, head trauma, addiction to pain medication, kind of this identity crisis as well that happens. What really makes this documentary shine though, and it's something that's reoccurring with all the documentaries I'm gonna talk about here, I like it when a documentary has a very interesting lead. I like it when the center of the documentary, the person in question, is very entertaining. And Chris Nylon, it's so unapologetically Bostonian. He has like that Boston accent. It's just very revealing of hockey. Even if you're not a hockey fan, I think the documentary, The Last Gladiators, uh, I highly recommend it. It's really entertaining. The hard part for me is changing those things that are ingrained in me. But I want to live. Third documentary I want to recommend to you guys is a documentary called Cobain Montage of Heck. I'm usually skeptical about watching musician documentaries. This year the documentary Velvet Underground was getting a lot of buzz but I skipped out on it because usually when you have a documentary about a musician, especially one as beloved as Kurt Cobain, they kind of become fluff pieces and you don't really get a good glimpse into their life. This one, however, is very brutal to watch. This documentary is basically a window into the personal life of Kurt Cobain, what made him such an artistic genius, and you get some beautiful animation as well as some never before seen clips of Kurt Cobain, some never before heard music from Kurt Cobain, even some of his personal artwork that he used to do on the side. As a matter of fact, one of the songs that was presented in this documentary later became a sample for a track by Kid Cudi and Kanye West, that track being Cudi Montage. What makes this documentary truly special, what makes this stand out from any other musician bio, is that they depict Cobain as this very broken individual. And most artists are very broken individuals. We even go back to artists like Van Gogh. Van Gogh, we talk about how he was schizophrenic and bipolar and he cut his own ear off. Once you watch this documentary, it kind of paints a beautiful picture of Kurt Cobain. This documentary also shows why this music connected with an audience when grunge was becoming a thing. One of the parts that truly portrays Kurt Cobain as a flawed individual is when he's talking about how he lost his virginity to an autistic girl who was obese and he was completely repulsed by her but proceeded to fuck her anyway. I love Kurt Cobain but even if you don't like Kurt Cobain, this documentary is really worth watching because I think you will gain an appreciation for Kurt Cobain. Yes, they portray him as a very flawed individual but it truly does add to his legacy, this documentary. And it's such a very vibrant, fast-paced documentary. You get a lot of behind-the-scenes footage of what his relationship was like with Courtney Love and how it was kind of like this kind of weird, parasitic relationship between the two individuals. I really like this documentary. Check out Cobain Montage of Heck, even if you don't like music documentaries and even if you're not even that much a fan of Nirvana, I highly recommend montage of heck. Are you getting all this? Yes! Oh, aren't we lucky? I'm Kurt Cobain. Next documentary I want to recommend is a documentary called Meet the Patels. This follows a man who's a comedian by the name of Ravi Patel. He's 30 years old and he just got out of this long-term relationship with a white girl. 
and he's an Indian man, as you can tell from his name. So he decides to go the more traditional route of trying Indian dating. And for those of you who are a bit familiar with Indian culture, the dating game in India is much different from the dating game in America. So it's about this guy who tries really hard to go back to his roots. This guy truly tries to go through the traditional process. He gives it a fair shot and he assesses, is this truly better or is it not? And I think that's what I really like about this documentary. It's actually very informative because I actually had no clue how the dating game worked in India. It's so very different from North American culture, so you kind of get to see what it's like to date in India. Meanwhile, you have kind of this fish out of water story. You have Ravi, who's a bit more Americanized, trying to reconnect with his Indian roots, but he kind of feels out of place because he's not quite as traditional as the women he's meeting. This whole documentary is filmed by his sister, and there's a dialogue that constantly goes on in the film between the sister and Ravi, and they really have a good charisma together, they really have a strong bond. Ravi, given he's a comedian, doesn't really care about being too revealing, he doesn't care about his personal life being put on camera, so it's really revealing of this whole culture. You also get appearances from comedians like Russell Peters, but the funniest people in this documentary are actually Ravi's family. Ravi's family is so supportive, yet they're so different. It doesn't really poke fun at Indian culture, but it kind of you kind of get to see those different stereotypes play out. There's a lot of technical flaws in this documentary, especially when it comes to its sound and its camera work. The camera work is pretty poor, and the sound does get muffled at times, and you kind of just hear static. It's a very, very cheap documentary, and a lot of it is hidden camera stuff. But this is a perfect example of a movie that's heart kind of overshadows its other shortcomings. I thought this movie had a lot of heart, and I really liked Ravi as a person. And I want to recommend this documentary. Watch Beat the Patels. I believe it's on Netflix, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> I love this picture. This is the closest an Indian picture ever gets to kissing. This should be considered obscene by some people. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, the last documentary I want to recommend is a documentary that's actually from Canada. It's called Indie Game The Movie. This movie kind of follows different independent video game designers as they struggle to make their video game independently. And it's a freaking huge monumental task, as you might know. Some of the video game designers featured in this documentary is the designer of the game Super Meat Boy, the designer of the game Fez, and the designer of the game Braid. I'm not really a gamer, to be honest, but that doesn't mean I don't respect video games. I, I really do respect video games, I'm just not very good at them. But this documentary, I highly recommend to anyone who's an independent artist. It doesn't even matter what your craft is, because these guys, go through so many lengths just to create their video games. And it really does promote the auteur's vision. It really does show that when someone makes an indie project, it's their sole vision. There's a part in here where the designer of Super Meat Boy is showing drawings from his childhood and how the drawings of his childhood influenced him to make this video game. That feeling of lonesomeness he had as a kid, the feeling of being kind of like an outcast or a reject or a monster, those were all things that made him want to make Super Meat Boy. And then it really goes into dark places that you don't expect. The interviewer asks one of the video game designers, what would you do if this video game doesn't get completed or fails or can't get released? What would you do? And the designer flat out says, I would kill myself. I've got nothing to live for, my girlfriend dumped me because I was too addicted to making this video game, I don't have much family, I think I would just kill myself. And it really goes to show what lengths these creators go to. There's also a sequel to this documentary called Indie Game, I think it's called Indie Game Ever After or something like that. I didn't see the sequel, I feel like this movie stands well on its own. I really like this documentary, Indie Game The Movie, go check it out. Damn it. 
So to me, those are some must-see documentaries. Let me know if you've seen any of these documentaries. If you like this video, please leave a comment, like the video. That way I know that I can recommend five more documentaries.